Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. So many of you know that I was recently in attendance at the Flight Sim Expo in Las Vegas. Uh, DOF Reality invited me out to help them with their booth and it was a fantastic event, fantastic time, but it was busy. It was so busy in fact that I couldn't even roam the showroom floor and check out a lot of the things that were on display. But there were two that I absolutely had to make a point of seeing while I was there. And one of them was the Yaw 3, which you can see my first impressions. I'll throw it up here if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, I, I've been looking at that motion platform for a while. And then the other one was the Somnium VR1. Uh, the Somnium VR1 is an exciting headset. There's a lot to like about this thing. And uh, from its modularity, from an aspect of you can get just a plain headset all the way up to uh, eye tracking, hand tracking, all that kind of stuff, XR. So it really holds the promise for those enthusiasts like myself that really want a very high-end VR headset but aren't willing to pay the $10,000 for the industrial grade headsets. So I was very excited about this. And I have to thank uh, Jorge and Artur both. Uh, they were willing to actually give me a demo before the show doors opened because once the show started, I didn't have any time. And so my heartfelt gratitude goes out to both those gentlemen for allowing me to sneak in before the show started and get a little sample of the Somnium VR1. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna actually play you my uh, first time trying it and give you just my raw impressions and, and what I was feeling there. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the actual experience I had and go over uh, all the details of what I felt about the Somnium VR1. So let's take a look. So, all right, so my impressions, we got the good vertical field of view, which is so important in dog fighting. Um, trying to get a sense of yeah, it's got good wide field of view. Gosh, the colors look really good. The colors look really good. So my very first thought in my head as soon as I put the headset on was, holy cow, this reminds me so much of my Vario Aero, which I absolutely love as far as the visuals, only instead of that you know, limited vertical field of view, I've got that experience and it's a tall vertical field of view. And that's the one thing that I really had a hard time with, with the Vario Arrow. And that's the one reason I felt the Pimax Crystal was a better option visually because you got that extended vertical field of view. So instantly I was like, oh my, here we are. We've got those screens that have that really glossy look to them and that really good contrast and just everything I loved about the Vario Arrow. So that was my first impression, but I quickly realized there was something very wrong with my experience in the headset. Man, I will tell you, the screens look pretty good. Definitely still got some distortion around your edges. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I mean, man, it looks so good. It looks so good in a lot of respects. It actually reminds me a lot of the first time I put the arrow on, as far as the Christmas, the blacks, just the overall kind of glossy slickness. Oh, that might be a tree. Yeah, that was a tree. Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, the colors are great. The field of view is good. I just, I, I, would, I would need to spend more time trying to find that sweet spot because I got just a little weird distortion around the edges. Now, I found it very comfortable. Uh, I was concerned with the comfort because obviously Steve, the VR flight sim guy, has had some comfort issues. When I put it on and got it all set up, it was it felt good. It didn't feel too front heavy or nothing. But I had some significant warping about the lower fifth of the screen. So on the very bottom of the screen, uh, I just was really uh, like a lens distortion where it was all the visuals were warped out. There was a little bit to the side, but that's kind of normal when you get out on these spherics. But that bottom fifth was just, it was odd. I had not, not ever noticed that in any other VR heads that I've ever tried. Now, I do know from my Vario Aero days that it's very important that you have that headset set in a proper position to be able to see clearly. So unlike the old days with the Fresnel lenses, when it wasn't centered, you'd, you'd have it be blurry. When you're dealing with the spheric lenses, if you don't have that thing centered properly, sitting on your face properly, you get that warping instead of the blurriness. So it's very important that you move that thing and get it where it, you can actually see a clear image all the way edge to edge and everything. So after messing with it on my head for a while, I found out that if I moved it down to the end of my nose, kind of like that, all that warping down at the bottom went away. It cleared right up and now I had my 
edge to edge clarity uh, with just a little distortion around the edges and stuff like that. But the problem was once I did that, this thing is super uncomfortable. So I had a choice. I could either keep it up where it was clear and, and comfortable um, with the warping on the bottom, or I could move it down to where it was almost intolerable for the comfort level, but I had the clear visuals. So that was the first thing. So I'm like, well, that might just be an adjustment thing. That's something I might be able to work with. But I still had something going on that I couldn't put my finger on. Yeah, I think it's better. It's still there, though. There's still something that's just off. And again, I'm being super picky. This is an amazing image. Don't, don't take it as I'm like, oh, this is crap. I'm, I'm just super picky and it's, there's just something. For me, it's important that it's like not a seal break or something. Like if you're feeling something like it's it, a seal break, because it, if it's something like you can feel that it's, it's fine, uh, that's, that's the thing I'm looking for. And it might be where I'm at. It's, it's, it's almost this weird swimming feel, like, ah, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I was looking around and you know, poor Jorge, he was trying to reset the simulator DCS and I was in full diagnostic mode in the headset. I was trying to figure out why I was still seeing this weird whatever it was. And so he needed me to keep my head straight and look at the menu because he was trying to start the application again. And meanwhile, I'm turning my head. So again, Jorge, I apologize so much. I know how frustrating that can be because I've run people through my headsets and had that same experience. So I do apologize, but my brain was just trying to figure out what the problem was in the headset and you know, just trying to diagnose it. And that's, that's why I was like so focused on that. And it wasn't until they actually were changing some settings and then they moved me into the steam cliff house. Uh, you're in that room where you've kind of got the wood plank floors and that's when I figured out what I was seeing. So what I'm seeing, so right now I'm looking at the floor, right? So as I move my head up, the floor is kind of doing a, doing this. Um, like it's like the floor is going through a wave. So, you know, I have- That, that should not be happening. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not extreme, but it's like, as I move my head around, it kind of, the floor kind of buckles and it's, it's dependent on where I'm looking th that it's doing it. Now, what I did was I did a computer recreation of what I was seeing. This is not through the lens footage. This was my recreation in my computer to show you guys kind of what I was seeing. And it was just really distracting. And I think that's what was throwing me off. I think when I was in the cockpit, I couldn't quite tell what was wrong. I just knew something was wrong. And then once I got out into that uh, grid-like floor space, I'm like, ah, there it is. That's exactly what's going on. So they tried a few times to change some settings. It never went away for me. That was an issue the whole time. Keep in mind, VR experiences are very subjective and it's different for everybody because of our face shape and our eye placement. This is something that uh, a lot of people probably won't, won't have an issue with, but I just wanted to point it out. Now, again, I was one of the first people that morning to try it. So I came back at the end of the day and asked them, did anybody else see this? Did anybody else have this problem? And they said, nobody else had that issue. So I was the only one. So I, I was really, I was really struggling with how do I present this to you guys? Cause I have to tell you what I saw and share with you my experience, but I also want Somnium to do well. And I want, I don't want to, um, I don't want to create an issue if nobody else is having it. So the best way I could come up with was to invite the founder and CEO Artur onto the channel to explain to you guys why you shouldn't worry about the problem I was having. So let's talk to Artur now. So welcome everyone. We have a very special guest joining us today. And Artur, I want to say thank you for the time. I know you're right in the middle of your Somnium Connect and to take any time, I truly appreciate it. Um, so- Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So um, my viewers just saw all my experience in the uh, VR1 and I just want to open the floor. Tell my viewers why they shouldn't be concerned with any of the things that I saw when I tried the headset. By the way, I didn't see what he, he was showing you before, so I hope there was also some positive stuff, um, oh, not yeah. only the, the negative, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so I think we touched upon, um, or from my understanding, and you showed me and explained to me, so you had basically one uh, major issue for yourself, is that you saw some weird artifact kind of on the lower part of the image um, yeah. on the VR1. Yep. And... Um, to me, so so when you said it to me, because I was communicating with you through, and hopefully part of that 
thing you will show on your channel. Uh, so we were communicating through um, uh, through the video, and uh, you gave me the feedback right away after you tried the headset. Um, you know, you were one of the few first people to try it, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, I think and Jorge he, said I was like the fifth person not in the company that tried it or something like that. Ex 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 exactly, something like that. And and um, and uh, for so so. Just to give you an idea of how do we do the checks of the headsets, um, every headset which which goes in to production and out of production, we have this special um, we have the special camera uh, which we which we bought. It's a special device which has several different big lenses. We've shown it to some YouTubers, um, you know, in December when they were visiting uh, visiting our offices. It's a very expensive device. And it's an automated test machine for two things. One is screens, um, and we use this machine to scan the screens for dead pixels, for color gamma inaccuracies, and also to uh, to calibrate screens together so that you have the same color gamma mm -hmm. to, to both eyes. Because the moment you have a difference in in the screens, and you know when 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 the company produces screens. There are different runs and there, there are different screens coming in. We actually, by doing those checks and dead pixels and all the inconsistencies, we actually throw away a lot of screens. So that creates a lot of cost on our side. And also, of course, it's partly reflected in the price of the headset, but we also calibrate them so that your eyes see the same gamma for uh, for the screens, which creates the whole, you know, kind of a more consistent image across across your view. So that machine is also checking the lenses. Okay. We exchange the different special lens, and then it checks the the lenses we're producing to make sure that there is no inaccuracies in you know, and it's within the tolerances, and the image is within the tolerances. Now that's one part um, of the process. The second part of the process is we have another camera, another setup, um, and I think some of the YouTubers showed it. I don't have pictures to be honest. I don't remember. Yeah, I, but I've seen it. I think have, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a setup where. Another camera is looking through the lens, already constructed lens, um, and, it, and it calculates and it makes the snapshot of the warping, uh, of the actual warping of that actual lens. Yeah. And that's what I sent to you yes. because what, you know, first of all, I have this device, uh, which I might do a cut, but I, I have this device here with me uh, because when I came back from, from Vegas, I, I just took it back um, and continue using it. Um, but we checked the device before it left. Yeah. I personally checked. The, this device before it left. Yep. I tested it for probably several days. We also had a backup device, which was a Titan edition, which had eye tracking and hand tracking. We didn't need to use it because you know we had just as a backup, and right. this device performed really well, so everything was fine. Right. But we had a backup which I tested as well before it left. So I personally kind of check marked the uh, uh, the device and said, okay, it's, you know the image is good, everything is good. There's no artifact, nothing, and then left. But when I came back and you kind of raised me this this thing, I said to our optic guys, I said, "Hey, make me a snapshot of uh, of the warping. Make me a snapshot of yep. the lenses because I want to see. Maybe I don't see something, but right. you know. And that's what I, you know, you can yeah, show I'll, it to you. And I'll that drop image, it. I'll drop yeah. it right here. I'll drop yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I'll see it right here. Yeah, and and that image shows you. So that image is, or that that lens is calibrated to show you one thing. Don't look at the colors. Don't look at the anything else. The only thing it, this lens is trained to do is to show you the right uh, lines, how correctly mm -hmm. right they are going, and how straight they are across the whole uh, spectrum of the lens, across the whole 125, uh, let's say FOV. So that that image, what this is an actual picture. This yeah. is not a. Uh, it's it's the picture made in pitch black, uh, so we cover that machine with with stuff. It, it's made in pitch black when the device is on. It stays there for several minutes, then it makes the snapshots, and then and then th that's it. Why well, so? I, so that's the picture of. I instantly you. went there and looked for the spot that I saw the weird anomaly in, and I don't see anything on that picture. So I mean, no, 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 it's not, it's I, not there. I yeah, mean, I, don't I, see I it either, again, I know, so. I know what you've seen, and I totally respect yeah. what you've seen. I don't want to kind of. Um, I, I just I just try to kind of say science talk yeah. more than me. I just try to show you this up. And the second thing, so you did this visualization where you kind of tried to show me what you've seen yep. uh, with this, you know, wobbly wobbly video. Uh, and I just took literally 15 minutes ago before I jumped on this call, I just took and showed right. you the um, 
the through the lens video of that device uh, when I kind of took my mobile phone and and shot it on the uh, wide angle lens of the and mobile I'll put, phone. And I'll put that. Not, I'll put yeah, exactly. That right it here. will probably be playing here. Yep, I'll Sorry, put it exactly. here. Uh, just to kind of also show that the, normally the camera sees these things. Like if you if you if if you do this kind of thing, the camera sees this thing. Now, so these are the kind of the the facts from uh, from 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 my side. I think the sure. other part, which for me is even more important, is you know when we were coming to the show, mm -hmm. um, I knew that the flight sim crowd is one of the most toughest crowds and the most picky crowds oh, out there. Like. I'm picky, Me too. but you know, flight simmers are picky too. I'm picky, and you know, we we're confident in our headset. I didn't know what to kind of expect from that yeah. crowd, right? Because people might have said, "Great, but this," or you know, whatever. I I didn't know what to expect, right? Um, because this was one of the first major um, conferences where we attended with a headset. We had small showcases for several people here and there. Guests were coming. Some journalists were coming um, recently. But the big, you know, just uh, big show was this was the first one. And we did, or Jorge did, and I was there for sure. a lot of time uh, remotely. Jorge did, I think, more than 120 uh, uh, demos. We were booked the whole day. Thank you for all who came and who, who tried the headset. That was amazing. And I'd say 95% of people had a very, very, very positive uh, feedback about the headset. Many said it's the best image quality they've ever seen. Yeah. Many said that it's, you know, some said that it's, uh, you know, slightly front heavy. Um, but also on the contrary, some said that it's the most comfortable headset they've ever worn. So, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm always saying like, it's very personal. VR is very yeah. personal, by the way. And, and this is, this is, this is what I, what I, own, I own all the headsets. Uh, and I'm lucky that my eyes are, I'm a normal, so I don't need to wear glasses, and my IPD is 64, so I'm kind of like in the middle of normalcy, sure. I would say, for 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 the for the VR crowd. But some people with you know wide uh, IPD above 72, for example, sometimes um, have problems with VR headsets. Um, we had few, so let's say we did 125 demos. I would say five people out of 125 demos came and said, "Hey, I mean, I had a gentleman who said, hey, I I, I was.'" um you know i was having problems focusing and i said well okay that's you know that's serious and i started asking like what hats do you use and then we found out that he has a very focal glasses some special glasses okay. um so i said to him you know it also depends how you wear the hat set yeah. how you put it on yep. you need to have time to you know because we had so many people the demo was like 10 minutes per person yeah um, and people need to have time to adjust things, to play around with it. How do they, you, like, even the five centimeters up and down oh, yeah. could play a role in how you feel the, the headset. And and uh, so so there were a few people who had, uh, there was a lady who came in first day, I think, and she said, like, mm, okay, I don't know. And then she came back with the different glasses. She said, I have sure. correct glasses with me, and then she loved it. So these kind of things happen, um, but I need to kind of, you know, I, I also believe my eyes. Um, sure. I know the headset. I know the other headset. Sure. And I also need to kind of believe the crowd. Um, and that was a very good test for us because we kind of, people were saying, I love the fact that if you look at our video of the impressions, mm -hmm. I love the fact that some people were trying to explain things which we always say as the selling point of the headset, mm -hmm. but they were trying to explain it with their own words without understanding <laughs> what they're trying to say. Sure. You know, there was a gentleman sure. who was trying to say like, wait a second, but the image looks more 3D. It's more 3D than other hats. That's binocular overlap, right? That's yes. where you kind of like, and, yeah. I, and I was like, that's great. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. He understands, like he, he feels it, but yeah. he doesn't know how to explain it. So mm -hmm. just to kind of clarify, yes, it might be, you know, I don't know what was your, your, cause you said you were co wearing contact lenses, so couldn't yeah. be glasses. Yeah. God knows, I wish you could try, you know, maybe the same headset or another headset, um, you know, soon, uh, maybe, maybe you will be able to, uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see how and uh, what could happen. But to, to me, I immediately kind of wanted to check it scientifically. So I asked the team, hey, make the picture, give me, give me, give me some things to kind of reference it so that it's not my eyes versus your eyes. It's more of a, oh, the camera is measuring yeah. it. Here's your line. 
uh, and here is the through the lens I can record, and basically that's the only thing I can I can do at the moment. Well, but in any case, you know, it's things happen. It's it, it, yeah. it could happen, and you could have that uh, that the thing. Well, just to be clear, nobody else saw what I saw. Right, I was the only yeah. one. So I mean, yeah. I'm weird. I mean, what I don't know what to say. I, and I have that. to I have to thank you. You know, it's very refreshing for you know you you run a pretty big channel about XR and flight sims and so, stuff. So-so. It's, it's not the huge. Yeah, okay, but it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a pretty big channel. And it's refreshing to, to see that, you know, you are proactively approaching and inviting me, again, thank you for oh, yeah. that, to kind of cover the other part of the story and bring the balance approach. Yeah. You know, we, we work with, you know, several YouTubers and I respect all people who are trying and making, sure. making it a living, but... It's very refreshing to see something like that, and I really appreciate it. And I hope more channels will do these things, not only towards us, but towards other products, because making a product, um, you know, we spent two and a half years doing this. Yeah. We've yeah. run thousands, I would say thousands of tests, like literally thousands sure. of tests, of calculations, of tests, and, sure. and things like that. And, and um, you know... If, if there's just one sided part where someone says, oh, I've seen it, it's, it's crap. Like, I've right. seen some you know, I've, I've, I've seen some comments, uh, again, overwhelming positive feedback. And then some comment on some YouTube channel, like, Oh my guy didn't like it because it was, uh, you know, uh, it was crap. And then you read this and you're like, okay, some guy said somewhere for someone, he didn't like it, but he didn't provide any, right. you know, feedback, any, like you provided me feedback. I immediately went and, and did this. Like for example, Steve, a VR flight sim guy, right. he provided us a lot of feedback over several months of him using it. And some of the things we were able to nail down and say, oh, wow, actually, really, you're right. And we just, you know, we correct this, for sure. example. We recalculated some things. So it's very refreshing, and thank you for doing that. Well, well thank you. And, and I was trying to think about the way to do this fairly because I'm like, again, I want to see you succeed. I'm like, I don't want to just come out with all this weird stuff that I saw. I'm like, the only thing I could come up with is to give you the platform to, uh, for lack of a better term, defend yourself. Absolutely. But, but I, I just wanted – I don't want my experience – to impact yours, if nobody else is ever going to have this problem, then that's my problem. It's not your problem. Oh, I'm, sh I'm fix, sure. So. I'm sure. Out of thousands of people, some people will have this. I, I, I'm sure, or maybe not. I don't know. But yeah. like, there will be some people who will see weird stuff. And the only way I can say to them is, first of all, we provided so many settings in the software that you can literally tweak um, and 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 maybe change the warping profile because we'll provide you several warping profiles, um, and you will be able to choose it. Sure. Or you just get used to it, um, but the, you know that that's it. Like that, it's, sometimes it will happen. Some people have a different eyesight, different sure. things, and it's very hard to to accommodate to everyone. Like it's impossible. No, and, and I can tell you guys just from my interactions with our tour here. I mean, if you can't hear the passion in his, in his voice about this product, and if you can't hear the drive, this is not a money thing. This is not something he embarked on to make a profit. No. This is a passion for him, kind of like I'm passionate about my motion platforms and stuff. So that is readily apparent. And that's why I commend you. And that's why I want so much for your, your company to flourish. I want your headset to just become adopted by everybody because I can relate to the passion you have for what you're doing. And so, like I said, I also have to be truthful for what I saw. And that's where the Deloma came in. And that's why I'm so glad you're willing to join me today because I wanted people to get your side. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Because, again, then they can make up their own minds. But but know, know for a fact I'm in your corner. Anybody that's willing to push VR and take a big chance. I mean, this was a huge chance for you to even embark on this financially and everything yeah. else. Um, I commend you for that, and uh, you know that's why this Thank video you. was painful for me because it's like I was so hoping to throw that headset set on and just be blown away, and when that didn't happen, I was so disappointed. Um, but, oh, you will be, you will be. It's okay. You know, you'll you'll be back. I know. I'm a, I'm a very stubborn person. It's a wonderful time to be an enthusiast. I mean, um, from a technology standpoint. That's true. I, it, I, it's just amazing. It amazes me, and I am so thankful I live in the time I live in. And so, again, I appreciate your time, and uh, you know, we'll we'll wrap this up. But if you ever, if there's ever, ever anything I can help you with, or any other questions, or anything, just ask. Or if you have any announcements, 
again my channel is always same, goes, same to goes to you i'm sure we'll 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 be in touch um okay. i you know uh, i cannot promise directly because we will need to regroup and see how many sure. uh, dev developments uh, headsets we'll have after that but you know we'll see if i can ship you one and you'll test it and ship back or whatever we'll we'll find some ways to right. uh to collaborate in the future in any case but again thank you for, for having me well i will i will commit to you if i get one to test i will do everything i can to get that experience where i want it and you will get a fair and honest uh, shake from me always on this channel. So I appreciate that offer. And if it happens, that would be great. But I also know you got a lot of other things on your plate. So uh, we'll get there when it's we get pretty there. Pretty much it's a lot. All, All right, right, my friend. Cool. Thank you, Artur. Thank you for the time. And I hope you have Thank a you. great Somnium Connect. And uh, again, hopefully we'll be in touch. All right. See you, everybody. Thank you. So there you have it. That's why you shouldn't have to worry about the problems I had in the Somnium VR1. Um, I know that this probably doesn't really help. I mean, it's a non-definitive first impressions, but I just want you to have all the information so that you guys can maybe um, look at some other reviews and you know look at some other things and just make this decision for yourself whether you know this is the right headset for you. I can tell you that if I didn't have the comfort issue with having to wear the headset way like this and I didn't have that distortion issue, this very likely would be a headset I'd be interested in. I'm still an OLED snob, so I still have to see the black levels, um, and I still need to see how, it, make sure there's no glare. But if those two things are not a problem, like they claim they aren't, this would be a headset that I would be purchasing, for sure. So, I hope that helps you folks. I do also have our tour and eyes discussion. We talked about a lot of things in our, uh, when we are going back and forth talking about the headset that it was too long for this video. If you're interested in seeing that whole unedited uh, discussion that Artur and I had, leave me a comment below. If enough people are interested and want to see it, I'll put it together and post it up here too. Um, there's some good information in there, but I also didn't want it to go on. It was, it was about 30 minutes, and so I didn't want to include that here just for the sake of brevity. So on that note, to keep this brief, uh, that's about all I have for you here. Uh, I appreciate you guys viewing. Make sure if you like this kind of content, you like and subscribe. And if you want to help the channel out and help us continue to make content like this, we have that super thanks down there. Uh, that would really help us out if you hit that. So thank you guys as always. And until next time, remember to get your game on.